Hey everybody, welcome back to the show. So good to be here with you today. We're about to dive in on the absolute best diet plans and specific foods. There's about a dozen that help us to boost our stem cells. Why does that matter? Well, as we start to get older and we start to get more fine lines on the face and overall skin, wrinkling of the skin, thinning hair, thinning skin, drying out of the skin, weakened uh, tolerance to exercise, less endurance, less energy, right? All of these things, the hallmark signs of aging, getting older. Well, all of that is, and one of the reasons is, because our stem cells are becoming weaker and weaker over time. So even though we're still producing stem cells, they're nothing like when they were when they were we were children. So when we were kids, we were able to you know, play outside all day, recover very quickly, right? Just a night's sleep, you're all set, you're good to go. Recover hopefully faster from colds as you're, you know, a teenager and even maybe early 20s. Uh, Also, if you were to get a cut, that wound healing hopefully will heal a whole lot faster when you're a child. Well, as we get older and our stem cells are not as prolific or strong, they're not doing that job. But what if there were foods that we could eat that would enhance these stem cells over our lifetime? Well, it turns out there are. And this work today is taken from Dr. William Lee's work. So Dr. William Lee, a part of a nonprofit working, it's called the Angiogenesis Foundation, working on what can we do in order to extend healthy lifespan? So I want to share that with you today. Uh, yesterday, hopefully you tuned in to yesterday's show. That was episode 3036, stephencabral.com slash 3036. Yesterday was actually on foods, five foods that mimic the GLP-1-like effects of weight loss drugs like Ozempic, Manjaro, etc. How do they do that? Well, they mimic being able to better balance insulin levels, glucose levels, and as appetite suppressants. So if body transformation is your thing, weight loss, want to lose body fat, check out yesterday's show for sure. Today, all the show notes will be at stephencabral.com slash 3037. Now let's dive into what are those foods that we can be eating on a daily basis, if not a weekly basis, in order to boost stem cell activity. All right, let's go over them right now. The first one you probably have heard about, but don't necessarily eat all that much. And I think that's why important. That's why we're going over this particular show, right? Some will be more common and some less common. Well, the first one is bamboo shoots, right? So bamboo shoots, how would you possibly eat bamboo shoots? Well, the nice thing is you can for the most part, we can get these foods everywhere now. There used to be at just small markets. Like I had this great grocery store when I lived in Boston. So downtown Boston, I lived in uh, Back Bay and I lived in the South End for many, many years. And we would have, uh, we had this grocery store that was an Asian market and it was phenomenal. And I could get all my uh, fruits that I liked there, different veggies, and it would be, it was fantastic. Well, you can still get these again if you look hard enough and you can usually order them online as well. But bamboo shoots, you can just steam them, you can cook them in rice. That's a great way to be able to eat them as rice based dishes. Uh, You can even put them in salads if you want. So bamboo shoots, Great thing to be able to add to any meal because all it's doing is adding a little bit of texture, a little bit of fiber, a lot of polyphenols, stimulates the stem cells. The next one is this, blueberries. You've heard about my, I've talked about my love for wild blueberries for a long time. There's almost nothing that wild blueberries can't do, right? So get yourself some wild blueberries, organic blueberries will do as well. Uh, Powerful antioxidants, polyphenols, they're part of the blue colored fruits and veggies, which is a really special one. It honestly is. Helps with anti-aging, helps with the brain, helps with the eyes, contains anthocyanins, pro-anthocyanins as well. And these things help with overall inflammation, immunity, and much more in the in the body. Blue, purple, blue, colored fruits and veggies, purple uh, lettuce and carrots and cabbage, all of these things can help with anti-aging. All right, the next one is Chinese celery uh, or bok choy. Both of these can be great additions. How do I cook these? Typically, honestly, we cook them, we either bake them or we cook them just in a pan with a little bit of water. So, We don't use nonstick anything. We typically use stainless steel or we use glass. That's what we use in our house. You could use ceramic. You could use whatever you feel is good for you. Um, Sometimes we'll use like a a different type of uh, like a crock pot. Uh, But again, no Teflon, none of that. We don't want any of that in our house. Those are all toxic, been proven to cause cancer. uh, And they're one of the top 10 carcinogens written about by the Mayo Clinic. So certainly we don't want that. So whenever I'm sauteing veggies, honestly, a little water in the pan, 
throw the veggies in, saute them. We add the olive oil, the sea salt, all of that afterwards. All right. So we just cook the veggies and then we add it with all the different flavors that we want. Now, if you're using some dry spices, no problem. You can cook those with the dry spices as well. All right. The next one is collard greens. Not everybody loves collard greens. Not everybody eats collard greens. They're more of a bitter green. What I found is this. You can mix them into dishes. You don't want to eat these really raw. They're pretty hard to digest. But again, you can saute them. You can cook them. Easy to be able to add to even mixing it with a broccoli, right? Chop them up, put it all in there, or add it to a rice-based dish, which a lot of time is what we do. If you don't eat rice, that's okay. You could do Japanese yams. You could do Yuka, you could do a lot of great other dishes and do a side of the collard greens. Cook them well, right? That's a nice way. Break them down, help them be a little bit easier to absorb. All right, you're gonna like a couple of these next ones. Dark chocolate, right? So what is dark chocolate? Easiest way to think about it is this. When you look at the ingredients on the back, you really want 85% or greater dark chocolate. I, I've been using now 100% dark chocolate. I did a Friday review. So every Friday I do a product review, 100% dark chocolate. That's what I use now. I'll sometimes put it in a little bit of coffee. I do a half decaf coffee in the morning, make it a nice mocha. Remember, there's no sugar because there's no sugar added. It's literally cacao beans. It's 100%. Now when you do 85%, that means there's 85% dark chocolate and there's 15% of other. So the other could be a dairy component a liqueur component. It could be sugar. It could be other things. All right. So at least 85% dark chocolate, look for organic, and it can be an amazing way to boost stem cells. Nice little uh, magnesium infusion there as well. All right. After that is goji berries. Goji berries have been, always been known to be a very powerful antioxidant-based berry, somewhat expensive. You typically always get them as dried goji berries. You can add them to um, a smoothie bowl. You could blend them into a smoothie. You can eat a handful all by itself, handful with a little bit of dark chocolate. Really powerful antioxidant, great polyphenols in that. The only drawback is if you have a nightshade-based issue, uh, they can be reactive, all right? so that, But it also means you don't need to eat all of these, right? I'm just giving you the list, but you don't need to eat all of these. You can just choose the ones you want, great for boosting stem cells. Next one is green beans, kind of a random one. Everybody knows about green beans. You can boost your stem cells by eating some green beans. All right, ECGC and green tea. I've been talking about it for a long time, but green tea, especially organic ceremonial grade matcha green tea. It is probably top five, literally healthiest things you can put in your body. I just keep seeing it over and over and over again. EGCG from organic ceremonial grade matcha green tea. Now, having said that, do I use it myself? No, my wife does. I don't. I just don't like the taste of it. And so the truth is that I don't want to do it even if it is my health. So I might take capsules maybe. Actually, one of the products I take has some EGCG in it. Uh, but the truth is that I'm just not a tea kind of guy. I like coffee. And so that's, that's why I say to you, you don't have to do all these things. Now, so far, I do all of these others. I don't do goji berries all the others, but I just don't do the green tea. You should do the green tea though. All right. All right. Next up is mango. One of my favorite things to put in a smoothie um, is not every day, but if I do a pre-workout, peri-workout smoothie, it is a little bit of banana. So it's a half a frozen banana. I put mango in there and I'll oftentimes put in a little pineapple or passion fruit. I mix in my vanilla daily nutritional support. It is a tropical smoothie. It's un believable. All my free smoothies are always in the podcast pages. So you can just get my free smoothie guide. That is one of my favorites. Try putting mango and pineapple together or mango and passion fruit together with just a little bit of banana for consistency. Unbelievable. All right. Next one is omega threes. Yes. Omega threes are in that top five. Basically it's like every, you just see so much research on omega threes, all of these people on the internet saying, Oh, it's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And that's why it works because it's a polyunsaturated fatty acid. This is why it works. Uh, the issue is, it's not that the polyunsaturated fatty acid's bad. It's that it's not oxidized, right? So we're getting a high level of omega-3s, not omega-6 poofa, right? We don't want omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids. We want omega-3s. And omega-3s, specifically from uh, no mercury-based fish sources, amazing for your health. It, it's like it's undeniable. There are thousands of studies just on omega-3s and all of the top five causes of mortality. To deny that is just, it's, I don't know. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot. All right. Pistachios, right? 
I mean, there's a lot of different nuts to choose from. Pistachios are one of those that can boost stem cells. Here's the thing. Get the ones that are not colored. Believe it or not, they're still making colored pistachios out there, right? So no dyes. You just want pistachio. And the other part is this. You have to be careful because pistachios that are old or get exposed to a little bit of dampness can grow mold. Uh, peanuts, unfortunately, pistachios, they can be a little higher in mold. So you have to be careful. I no longer eat pistachios. I used to love pistachios, but I just don't need any more mold in my life. I had mold when I was younger and that was brutal. And so uh, I do work a lot in my practice with people exposed to mold. We have a mold protocol that works really well and a mold test. So if you're worried about mold and mycotoxins, uh, you can find everything in our practice at stephencabral.com slash shop. Mold protocols there. If you know you have mold, if you want to test for mold, uh, you'll find the mold mycotoxins test. All right. Random fruit, plums. Some people love plums. Some people don't. One of my daughters loves plums. I don't like plums. I don't like the squishiness. I don't like the consistency, but that's why I go back to. You don't need to do every single one of these, but if you can do a lot, if you can do most of them, well, you're going to be getting a lot of benefits. Spinach. So I will often eat a mixed green salad and there'll be some spinach in there. Not the only thing that I do because it is high in oxalates. So I don't know that we all need to be worried about that, but I just go easy. You know, I go a little bit easy on the amount of beets I take in, the amount of spinach I, I take in. I still take them in because it's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm just careful about the load of spinach uh, that I'm putting uh, into my body on a daily basis. All right. Next one, this goes back to my Italian heritage here as well, and Portuguese, squid ink. You might say, how do I get squid ink? Squid ink pasta, believe it or not. Now, I'm not saying you need to eat pasta, but squid ink, powerful antioxidants in the ink itself that can boost stem cells. Now, are you going to be eating squid ink, uh, the black ink, on a daily basis? No, probably not. But I wanted to include it because it was part of Dr. Lee's list, and I wanted to pass the whole thing on to you. All right, the next thing is turmeric. Turmeric, as you know, often sometimes called curcumin, <laughs> the missed my mouth there for a second, is one of the most powerful antioxidants, immune system boosters, glucose balancers that's really out there. It's being studied now for its uh, cancer-based research and much more. And much more. All right. So there's one last one. And this is not one that I've ever taken before. And I've studied it in India. I've studied in China. And I haven't even seen it, but it's called black chokeberry. And now I'm extremely interested in seeing if, if I can get some black chokeberries. But to my knowledge, I have never seen them in a store, but I want to get them now and I want to pass it on to you. That's the last one on the list. They are black, that dark color. Remember that dark color, purples blacks, like the black squid ink, blues, deep blues. These contain a lot of powerful anti-aging nutrients in them. All right. Now I wanted to finish with this. So those are the main foods. We'll list them today. So if you missed the list, stephencabral.com slash 3037, we'll list them for you. Okay. Here I wanted to share with you the four best diet plans that are going to typically include these and have been shown to boost stem cells. So they enhance stem cells. First one, Mediterranean diet. I have a whole show on that. I'll link it up here for you today because I don't want this podcast to go too long, right? I want every day add a little bit more information. Hopefully that builds you up, builds your family, your loved ones up. The second is the Okinawan diet. One of the best things that I've ever seen is basically a blend between the Mediterranean diet and the Okinawan diet. And it's not radically different. They're still getting their seven to nine servings and fruits and veggies a day, mainly veggies. But the Okinawan diet has a few very interesting elements to it. Some of that bok choy or these greens that we were talking about, also adding in purple potatoes. There's that purple again. So if you can add those to your diet, Okinawan diet, 60% purple potatoes, believe it or not, 60%. Get those purples and blues into your diet. Try for it every day. Every day I get some purples and blues in my diet. All right, the next one is this, calorie restriction. Well, calorie restriction can be added to any diet plan, but caloric restriction helps to boost stem cells. Here's how I look at it. You basically, I, I'm not saying that you need to weigh yourself on a daily basis, all of those things. If you are not basically gaining weight, you're on a caloric restricted diet. You're on a diet that's just maintaining your weight or slight deficit 10% or so, maybe 20% maximum. I teach this inside of high performance health. We don't want to get too catabolic, but we want to be on the cusp of a little bit of caloric restriction. I like to keep it simple one day a week. So I do my typical 12 to 14 hours a night of intermittent fasting. So the last one, by the way, the fourth one is intermittent fasting. So 
So I want to share that with you now and how it leads into caloric restriction. So at six o'clock at night, I'm done eating. I stop eating. And then I go till eight in the morning, about eight in the morning. I don't, if it's 10 minutes difference, I don't worry about that. I go from six at night to eight in the morning. I typically do a 14 hour maximum. It's between 13 and 14 hours. It works great for my body. Once I start the day, once I start my morning walk, all of these things, I want nourishment for my body. Keep those cortisol levels from getting too high. Okay. So how do I get though, besides the intermittent fasting, the caloric restriction, simple, straightforward, three Mondays a month, not every week, but it's almost every week, Sunday night, I have my dinner. And then I'm either doing just DNS shakes, the daily nutritional support shakes, just one scoop, three times a day, or two scoops in the morning and one other scoop and one other scoop, uh, before dinner and, or just water. And what I'm doing, so that's called the One Day Reset Diet. I'll link that up today as well as 3037, another podcast on that. What I'm doing is I'm basically having one meal. So I'm going 24-hour fast just that one day, but at I'm still having dinner with my family on Monday night. I love being able to sit down with my two daughters, my wife, my dog, and, and we sit down, we have dinner together. And so that is something that obviously I, I recommend, I very much um, appreciate, but it also helps with a little bit of that caloric restriction because I have a normal dinner but I don't have all the other calories that day. So even just that one day a week, super easy. I've talked about five, two diets in the past. Check all these out. The last thing I want to add by Dr. Lee, Dr. Lee said, what helps, what harms, harms stem cells the most? A high fat diet. Talked about this in the past. A high sodium diet. Shouted about this as well. Or a high glucose based diet. What is the standard American diet? High fat, high sodium, high processed foods. We don't want those things in our diet. Now everyone's going to come out and say, what about olive oil? Of course, olive oil is amazing, right? That's in my top five as well. Um, What about sea salt? Okay, sea salt's great too. You don't need five or 10 grams a day, right? 5,000, 10,000 milligrams a day of sodium. You don't need that, but you can add some sea salt. Yes. Hyperglycemic? No, we don't want processed foods in our diet. Fruits are okay. Your healthy starches, as long as you're exercising, they're at a healthy weight, you can keep those in as well. These are the healthiest diets. These are the pros and cons. I'd love to hear from you. What did you think of the show? Leave it in the comments below. And again, I'll link all of those foods at stephencabral.com slash 3037. Take care, everybody. Be well. Share the show with anyone you believe it could serve. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.